Okay, we are going to call up my buddy Stacy Blades from LA Guns, let it rock, rocks gang, and uh, proceed with the new series that I'm calling Ask. Makes sense, right? That's my hand right there. So let's call him, see if he's ready. These are questions, you know, you guys had for Stacy. Now, Stacy was telling me to download OVO, O O V O O dot com. It was like Skype with less interruptions, but I started to do it and I wanted to make all these changes to my computer, so I ended up saying, hey, let's just do it on Skype. And looks like he's away from the desk. Now I'm just going to keep it recording. No, he's typing. Let's see. The hammer hey. jammer. Uh oh. Can you hear me, Stacy? Yeah. I got audio, but no video. You probably got to click that video camera icon. Ah, there it is. There's the man. Okay. There he is. I'm already recording, dude. I hit record. Let me. Are you getting kind of distorted? Um, is there like controls for the uh, volume for the video or microphones? Uh, yeah, that's right. You're an OVO guy, huh? Yes. Go up to. What are you on? A PC or a laptop? I'm on a laptop. Uh, it should be the same layout. In the top left, go up there and okay. click. Uh, uh, hold on here. View or. That's what Google? I was. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, go to. Uh, Tools and hit options. Okay. <laughs> Sounds. Here we go. Um, Your audio and video is good. Are you saying mine's breaking up a little? No, actually, yeah, actually, it's actually pretty good. The um, at, when at first it was just like, bleh, and so uh, I think we're good. So you don't use Skype. You use an OVO. Yeah, because you know what you can do. Um, up to 12 people, not that I mean, you'd have a video conference with 12 people would be a nightmare, but it has that capability, and um, I just find the signals better. Um, yeah, I, you know, I probably should investigate it, because it, it wanted to download and change things on the computer, and I, that always scares me when I see that, because I don't know what it's going to change. Yeah, I've been, I've been using it, you know, because I know you teach on Skype, too, and I've been doing it for about, I don't know, four years now. And it's usually good, but I notice, like, if there's a storm, because I've got students across the USA plus in other yeah. countries, and that will affect it, man, if there's a storm yeah. coming by. Yeah, totally. Like I said, um, there when I had that uh, uh, interview with the producer from that show on Animal Planet, my cat from hell, it was like, it was horrendous, and it was like, ah, uh, just, you know, that left a bad taste in my mouth. So, but this seems to be good, so knock on wood, we're... I think we're good. Yeah. So, dude, how accurate is Wikipedia, man? I hear that people can just put whatever in there. Have you ever checked yours? Yeah, it was uh, a little bit wrong here and there. I may have gone in myself and updated it. That's um, what I was going to ask you, man, because, yeah, I've, I use it once in a while, you know, but I, people are, I, I was told anyone could sign in and just put, you know, whatever they want, really. Yeah, it's like I'm like I'm not happy with the picture that's up there. I'm like, how do I change this? Yeah, exactly, dude. So you've been a busy man. Yeah, totally. Well, I'm just gonna get right to it because I, okay. you know, we got a lot of questions from people, but I wanted to filter through them and you know. Sure. So, sure. Um, first one. This is actually from a student of mine. He's also like an amp tech. This dude's awesome, John Cooper. Okay. And uh, he said. And some of these are interesting because I want to know too. What amp do you use, and what do you like about them? And he's an amp guy, so he's like seriously wanting to know. Okay. Well, uh, you know, most of the touring that I have done over the last seven, eight years is always flying, so it's always rented backline. Um, so, in that case, which is the majority of the shows I play throughout the year, uh, it's Marshall JCM nine hundred, the dual reverbs. Yeah. Um, I really, that's kind of my sound. I actually, uh, when I'm not that, when I'm playing locally or in the vicinity, uh, uh, LA or Vegas, um, I'm actually a, a, a great um, 
blew to 120. I was with Craig for many, many years. They're not a company anymore, unfortunately. But, oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Um, they were St. Louis Music for years, and uh, they were really great to me. They gave me tons and tons of uh, amps. Um, so I like those heads because they've got a lot of punch. It's kind of like a perfect mix of a Marshall and a Mezza Boogie. Yeah, dude. Yep. Built-in reverb, uh, two channels, uh, six L6 tubes in them, uh, and just, you know, volume and balls up the ass. 6L6, 6L6 is, because uh, I'm playing, I've used a Mesa Boogie Duel, so that, the, the, that's what they have, I think, right? I think so. I'm not too familiar with the boogies, but um, uh, I do like those amps, and I still still use them when, uh, whenever I do play in town, which is not that often, but... Um, they're really warm sounding, and they uh, they have a nice gain. And with uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't run the gain kind of like what I would do on the Marshalls. I run it about seven or so with the, with the uh, tube screamer. Because um, they're pretty fat, from what I remember, the crates, the distortion side. Yeah, very fat. So I don't run the run it too hot. Uh, but they got a great reverb sounding, and they got a pad button on the front of the amp that uh, is a um, for the effects loop. Um, so I like that feature too. What's uh, that? What's that other amp to, next to the crate? Uh, that is a well. Crate became Blackheart, and that's kind of when they were on their way out. Um, I oh. don't use that amp too much. It's not the greatest sounding. Cabinet sounds really good. Um, I think it's seventy-five watt Celestians in those, but um, and then they, they kind of just went out of business. And I remember they were just like giving those amps away they're like go down to mates and grab as many as you want i was just like what okay <laughs> so your baby would be that that half stack crate right there though yeah i've got two of them um there's another one uh um on the other side uh I actually at one point had five heads from them holy cow uh, yeah I, I i uh got rid of a few <clears throat> uh they were also making back in 05 they came out with this killer solid state uh amp called the VTX 350 and I was using those uh, quite a bit on tour as well with LA Guns. Uh, that, that had built in um, a multi-FX and three channel. Um, nice. The problem with solid state amps is uh, I, I did like the tone of those but they're so noisy yep. uh, that uh, you know that got that you know, you always revert back to tube head, as far as I'm concerned. That, that's always been, um, you know, I'd rather play with a tube head. Yeah, that's the same way. Uh, solid state for a while here and there. Um, yeah, there's just a warmth with the tubes, man, that's hard to replicate with solid yeah. state. Exactly. Hey, on your end, do you have, um, it's like, equalizer controls right now on your speakers, or no? Um, on the computer? Yeah, it sounds bassy. No. For some reason. It's bassy. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what do we have? That's because you're running it through a 412 cab. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It should be fine. Okay. It just seems bassier than normal. Um, well, that's cool. Right on, dude. Um, we got, how many questions do I got here? We've got... You know, I started with saying 15, and then I dropped it down to 10, because when I interviewed Les, McMartin's son, mm -hmm. well, we go way back, so we, we were kind of okay. shooting it with a bunch of stuff, but it was like a four-part video. People people liked it, but I figured 10 questions is, is good, man. Well, if, if you, I mean, if you've got them, uh, I mean, I don't mind answering them. Okay, cool. If you want to call 15, yeah, no worries, bud. All right. I don't know. I think I stopped, I, I stopped at 10, but I picked the best 10 that I thought. Okay. okay, this next one's from Brent Halper. He says, We all see these guys as rock gods and picture them all, as all music all the time. What else besides music makes you tick? Family, hobbies, etc. Um, you know, I like spending time uh, at home. Uh, I've got three cats that are, you know, kind of my kids. Cat power, dude. I got six of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, so you know when I when I'm gone, uh, I'm gone almost every weekend. Just lately, uh, just finished kind of a ten week tour um, with the uh, new rat. Yep. And uh, so you know you come home and you're jet lagged and it's such a quick turnaround. Usually it's like you're only home for three days. So you try to have 
somewhat of a three-day normalcy period, uh, which is trying to catch up on your rest and doing things that you normally do. But I just kind of like hanging out and, and you know, um, I'll do like, uh, I love to hang out with friends that like go to happy hour. Vegas is all about happy hours. Um, so I uh, kind of enjoy that and, and catch up with friends. And um, You and Oz tearing up the town in Vegas, man. That, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's what, um, so, uh, you know, I've had the last couple of weeks, off. it's been a nice kind of, it's a double-edged sword, though, because you get so used to living a certain way or in on tour, you're kind of in tour mode. Yeah. That, you know, it's nice to come home, but then after a week, it's like, kind of like, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm yeah. so used to, like, waking up, having breakfast, you know, going to sound check, coming back, and ready for the show, and rinse and repeat. So... You know, after a week and a half or so at your office, it's like you kind of get a little squirrely. For me, it's like, um, you know, right now, it's like I'm really looking forward to getting back on the road. Right. Uh, but, you know, I like to spending time with my cats and uh, traveling and, um, you know, I, I like watching a lot of documentaries and, and stuff like that. Dude, that's, I'm serious, that's about, I'm not a very broad person, dude. I mean, you know, just like on your downtime, man, it's music again. Whether you're going over and recording stuff with Oz or whatever, it's like music's always on our minds. And you yeah, know. my fiance just poked her head. She goes, "What am I, rat girl? You didn't mention me." And I'm like, "Oh, no you, way. you got the doghouse tonight, brother. You're gonna be in the doghouse." Enjoy a lot of time with my fiance. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm right there. It's my cats. Now that my kids are gone, it's mm -hmm. about my my cats and my music. And you know, I'm not a sports guy. I'll watch you know football once in a while, but. Yeah, me too. It's 24-7 music for the most part, you know? And I like documentaries, too. I like kicking back at night and just, like, I don't know. It, it, it's not probably as uh, diverse as most people are, but I think musicians are kind of a separate breed, man. We, we, uh, we are. We're, we're one track-minded for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Be, you know, many years ago, it was like going out and partying and doing drugs and drinking and uh, acting a fool. Um, those days are pretty much behind me, but, you know, it was fun uh, during those years. Uh, that's how I would spend my off time, which wasn't always healthy. But uh, well, yeah, because you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, that's how I was with my last yeah. band, which split up in two thousand four. And uh, you know, you get tired of waking up with a freaking headache and got to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just wake up. You know, it's getting old. <laughs> right. Hey, how's the video? Is it, it nothing? Bad. Nothing's uh, freezing up. On your end, right? It's being a little, it's being a little temperamental on this end, but we're 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 good. Okay. All right, cool. Let's move on. This next one is from D Nuts. Uh, who are your Nuts. yeah? Who are your guitar influences? Which I think I know what they are, but who are your guitar influences and why? He's got kind of got a double question. And how has the rock scene changed since the late '80s? Pros and cons. So let's start with influences. Uh, geez, I've got so many. Um. I think that, you know, right off the bat was like, uh, was definitely uh, Randy Rhodes, um, but, you know, I was into guys like uh, Neil Sean, really into Neil Sean a lot. Um, I got a lot of my melodic style from that. Um, also, really, uh, one of the, uh, after Rhodes, it was definitely one of the first shred guitar players I was into was Vivian Campbell, actually. Ooh, his first two albums with Dio, huh? Yeah, just, uh, oh, God, amazing. Uh, and uh, a lot of people don't know that I was really into Neil Giraldo from Pat Benatar. Uh, still to this day, I think he's an amazing guitar player. Underrated. Very underrated. You listen to those, that stuff he was doing on that second record, um, you know, solos and like Treat Me Right and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, really amazing. You know, Hells for Children, all of that. Great stuff. Great songwriter, too. Oh, yeah. Well, dude, the solo to. Um you know, even hit me with your best shot, just, yep. you know, it's not always about the shred, you know, man, as long as we've been playing, and, and um, he's just, there's another one, man, uh, from Forner, and I'm forgetting the guitar player's name, you probably know his name, um, is it, well, I think it's Hot-Blooded, the solo to Hot-Blooded, it's, oh, that's great. it's abstract, man, it's, it's weird, it's it not necessarily sense. technical, yeah. but it's unique and abstract, and, and I, I totally appreciate that stuff, man. Yeah. So uh, those were early influences. Um, what about Lynch, Stacy? 
You know, totally. You know, when all that 80s, the LA 80s metal hit, I just like lost my mind. I was like, you know, 15 at the time, uh, 15 or 16. Uh, so, you know, when I heard Rat and, and, and Dawkins and, and uh, you know, uh, Wasp and all those bands, uh, Rough Cut, um, it was so guitar driven. It was just like, it was just this excitement and this newness um, from all the 70s stuff that I was listening to. Uh, so Lynch was definitely definitely an influence um, as well. And um, what about Ed? You know, I like them more as a band. I think he's uh, from another planet. I mean, the guy's playing is just out of this world. Yeah, it's phenomenal. But you know, when they came out in '78, I was only ten. So when I heard Van Halen for the first time at ten, it was just like I couldn't grasp it. I was too young was like kind of over my head so but you know got into the band years to come after that uh, being 10 years old um, I was kind of more into the band it didn't speak to me in huge volumes because some were all about Eddie Van Halen yeah uh, for me it was more Randy Rhodes I, I, I think the reason that being having said that I started on piano when I was very young, when I was grade level. Like lessons, recitals, the work. So I think that when, you know, Randy's classical kind of stuff and all of the, the you know, diminished minors and all of those types of, type of runs that he would use resonated in me. I think it was because of the me being a piano player. Um, sure. So um, I, I gravitated more towards him than him. Eddie Van Halen, but I mean, he guy's amazing. Yeah, that's the age old question, man, that people go back and forth with is Eddie. You know, you're, you're two years older than me, so we're basically the, the same thing. You know, I remember hearing Eruption, and I wasn't a guitar player yet. I played a little bit of piano like you, and that's what actually inspired me to play, start playing guitar was Eddie's sound. It was like out of this world. So that, for me, it was different, yeah. but Randy was obviously, you know, Eddie and Randy neck and neck, you know. 